Hi fans of uh, high quality entertainment, welcome to my latest video. I always think, I, I've said this before, and I haven't done that in quite a while, but I always think somebody <laughs> clicking on my video for the very first time and I'm doing that and they're, they probably think that for any of my videos. It's like, what's, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> I don't need to do the teeth thing. So my idea for today's video, and by the way, I'm doing another rant tomorrow, so stay tuned for that, is 12 albums in my CD collection that I feel are underrated, and they are from the 70s. So it's, I think it's going to be called Top 12 Underrated 70s Albums. Something like that. Now I've got the 12 here and I'm just going to take a minute or two to rank them. What I'll do is I'll rank them from, you know, my, I guess my favorite to my least favorite of the 12, but you know, I still really like all, all 12 of the albums and I feel they're underrated. And for most of these, I'm thinking of, you know, overall with fans that like these artists, that, uh, not for all of them, but, but for a lot of them, uh, there's, there's certain albums that uh, I notice some fans don't care for, and I'm thinking, that's a great album. Don't get me mad. I'll do a rant video. I'll be back. And uh, just a, re a reminder for my buddy Glenn Kellaway from the basement. He does a live chat every went or almost every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And depending how I feel, I'm going to try and make his live chat tonight. So just go to his uh, front channel at 8 o'clock. He doesn't uh, pre-schedule his live chats. Just go there at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you should see him live and in person. Not in person, but live. You wouldn't want to see him in person, believe me. Okay, these are my top 12 70s classic rock albums that I feel are very underrated. So for this number 12, I think for the fan, fans of this band, it wouldn't be necessarily underrated, but I think overall the, the band, is doesn't get the, the respect they deserve. They're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in the early 70s, they were huge. And they've had so many, you know, big hit singles. Uh, I gave Glenn this album in one of our recent CD exchanges, and, you know, he'd, he'd never heard the, the full album, and he was very impressed with it. Number 12 is... Three Dog Night, suitable for framing. And what really, you know, I know they do a lot of covers, but they do, they make it their own. And they have the actual real band that played on their albums. There were no studio musicians. These were, this was the band that played on all of the Three Dog Night albums, and they are so good. You know, it's not all about just the, the great lead singers. So, and they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Don't get me started. I'll go on a rant. <laughs> yeah, this one includes, uh, yeah, they, they were recording Elton John uh, and Bernie Taupin songs be before they were even famous. Yeah, they do uh, Lady Samantha. And then they do a cover version of Feeling All Right, and of course Eli's Coming, and there's Easy to Be Hard and Celebrate. And they even, you know, write some of their own songs on this album. Very underrated. Get into Three Dog Night. So number 11 is a band I've talked about off and on for years. They're probably... In my CD collection, one of the one of the least known. I mean, if Sparks are kind of kind of you know they're known now, they're around here, 
this band would be <laughs> way down here. But they do have their fans, and uh, I'm talking about the band Deaf School. This is their third album, and my favorite, English Boys. No, what is it? Get it right here. English, yeah, English Boys Working Girls. And they're, they're doing some concerts, I think in December, for their 50th anniversary with, uh, I think, seven of the eight original members. Sadly, you know, one of them passed away. But just great art, kind of art, rock, rock, pop. Uh, and once again, really talented musicians. Go to Wikipedia and read up on them. Right now. No, not right now, after this video. <laughs> Number 10. Once again, I believe uh, I gave this to Glenn in a recent CD exchange, and from what I remember, he really did like it. This is, in the 70s, this artist put out albums that, you know, didn't do that well. Uh, a lot of fans don't care for them. And so I was kind of, even though I have all of his albums, there's certain albums I, I kind of don't listen to that much because of other people's opinions. And then one day I listened to this with fresh ears and I said to myself, this is a damn good album. It is. Captain Beefheart, The Spotlight Kid. Not quite as bizarre as, you know, Trout Mask Replica and some of his other albums, but it's really good. And I feel very underrated. Number nine, number nine, number nine is... Yeah, I would say I became... Thanks to Spotify, because they'd kind of given up on this band, and then I was listening to this one album that I never really cared for when it came out. And it's like, oh my god, I love this now. And I ended up buying this uh, pretty expensive box set. And this is their second album, and I think it's a very underrated album, The Clash. Give them enough rope. Give them enough rope. Produced by Sandy Perlman of the producer for Blue Easter Cult. Yeah, great songs. If you love The Clash and you don't think this is a very good album, you need to check it out again. I love Sandinista too. It's actually my favorite album, but this is great too. It's not all about London Calling. Number eight, I've talked about many times, so I won't talk about it too much. I'll just say that it's frustrating when when I, you know, I'll, I'll watch rankings of this band's early albums. And this, this album, not, not just that it's at the bottom or near the bottom, but just, just some of the things that the fans of this band say about this album, you know, kind of putting it down. And I think it is a great album. It is Black Sabbath Technical Ecstasy. Yeah. It's from the super deluxe box set I have. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't get it. Yeah, I even love the uh, Bill Ward song, It's All Right, which is kind of uh, Beatlesque. It's a really nice song. Yeah. And some people don't know that doesn't belong on a Black Sabbath album. That's, that's the way they talk. <laughs> Love it. Number seven. I loved this album as soon as it came out. And it's just for a lot of Queen fans. It's, it doesn't really get that many accoloids. I don't think I've ever said the word accoloids on my channel. This is a first. I'm learning new words to say on my channel. Accoloids. Aren't you impressed? I'm talking about Queen Jazz. 
Yeah. Fat bottom girls. Nothing wrong with fat bottom girls. I mean the song. Uh, bicycle race. Uh. <laughs> Can't show that on, on YouTube. Unless you pause the video. Yeah. Of course, let me entertain you. Dead on Time is so rockin' and heavy. Yeah. It's one of my favorite Queen albums. And it's underrated. Number six. And I mentioned uh, kind of recently that I the one thing, you know, you have regrets with selling certain CDs or maybe box sets that you kind of, you know, you stop listening to or you just, or you needed the money sometimes, that too. But I do regret selling the box set I had for ELO. So I've only got El Dorado, which is my favorite ELO uh, album, and this very underrated second album by Electric Light Orchestra, ELO 2. Yeah. Just great stuff. Number five. Now, I didn't sell this box set. It's one of my favorite box sets. And so when this came out, it was much more commercial than their earlier albums. And, and at the time, even I, you know, I, I didn't think too much about bands selling out back back in the 70s, but even for me, it's like, oh, this, this band's going really commercial, selling out. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with the album. It is damn good. It is Blue Oyster Cult Mirrors. Yeah. I think I only played it like once or twice when it came out, and I was a huge Blue Oyster Cult fan. And... So for many years, I never listened to it until I got the box set. And, you know, once again, listening to it with fresh ears, it's a great pop rock album. Next up, speaking of Glenn Kellaway from The Basement, one of his all-time favorite artists. <laughs> used to think this album wasn't very good. And it's from, you know, reading on it and then other fans talking about it. And then just one time a couple of years ago, I really listened to it and I realized it's a damn good album. It is Lou Reed, Sally Can't Dance. It's a typical, excellent Lou Reed album. Okay, my top three. I love, love, love all these three albums. This one should be in everybody's collection. They're such an underrated band. They were together for years and years and years. And I only have three of their albums, so I definitely need to get more of them. But I feel this album is so underrated. It might be for, you know, if I made a top 10 list of the most underrated albums of all time, I think this would definitely be on my list. It is Golden Earring Switch. Man, I love this album. And I also love, of course, uh, Moon Tan, which I have, and To the Hilt. But like I said, I need to, I also want to get their, their first live album. Such a great band. Okay, number two, definitely, <laughs> uh, for, for fans of this band, it doesn't get a lot of love. But I've always loved it because I think it might have been the very first album by this band that I bought with my own money. And I saw them on the tour for this album. And I just love the album. I feel it's very underrated. 
tornado or tornado by yes. I even love the really uh, sugary sweet song, Circus of Heaven. Uh, I think it's a beautiful song. Uh, yeah. Are you a fan of this album? Let me know in the comment section below. And number one, uh, I've, I've talked about this album so much, so I won't say too much more about it. And I interviewed the mighty fine lead singer and guitarist for the band. Once again, when it came out in the early 70s, I was disappointed because it wasn't as heavy as their earlier music. But it is so underrated, and it's my favorite album, actually, except for their live album, Grand Funk Survival. And I love their version of the, the Rolling Stones Give Me Shelter on this album. I actually love it more than the Rolling Stones version. And that is it. Let me know in the comments section below. What are some... Yeah, be, be, you know, talk about these albums I showed you, or let me know some 70s albums that you feel don't get enough love. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.